Welcome everybody for um, September 24th, 2015. Um, this will be uh, Moonscapes number 37 in the series. Um, got some good news and some bad news tonight. Um, uh, today is, uh, let's see, today's Thursday night, so we're Friday, Saturday, uh, three nights away from um, a total solar eclipse, uh, sorry, solar, total uh, lunar eclipse, which I told you I would try to uh, image um, uh, so we could watch the eclipse start and then uh, see total eclipse. The uh, uh, problem was I'm leaving the very next morning for Florida to visit my son in, uh, um, yeah, down in uh, near Ocala, Florida, and um, it's going to be kind of a tight schedule, uh, but as it turns out, we've had this high pressure system sitting over New England. We've had beautiful clear skies uh, for about five days in a row now. Uh, in fact, that's why I'm shooting this video tonight, because from the looks of the weather forecast, we can expect a, a system that's causing a lot of rain down over the Carolinas off the east coast to move up. Close enough to us here in Connecticut where we're going to get clouds, maybe a chance of a showers, and of course, it's Sunday night, the night of the eclipse of the moon. So, uh, looks like I will not probably be doing that eclipse, and then, of course, with my tight schedule, in a way, it works out better to my advantage as much as I wanted to do that eclipse of the moon. So, anyway, um, I thought I'd uh, try to at least get a video put up for tonight, and uh, here we are. Uh, we're actually one day sooner than I was last month. Uh, we're near a moon, uh, a, a, a waxing gibbous moon headed to four, be a full moon, uh, as I said, three nights from now. Uh, of course, that's when the eclipse would take place. Right now, we're on the um, uh, sinus iridium area, uh, and that ring-shaped structure down there, uh, the mountain range that, uh, let's zoom in on that a little bit. I got quite a bit of zoom with this uh, eyepiece. Um, that's the uh, Jura Mountains. Um, I'm not real happy with that focus. Um, it's supposed to be on automatic, but I think we might be having quite a bit of atmospheric disturbance going on right now. Uh, I've got it on auto. Um, let me uh, let me see what happens if I take auto off. And. Uh, Try uh, changing a focus a little bit on my own, and let's see what happens. Um, that's not what I want. Uh, every time I get into this software, there, there's focus. Yeah, auto is on. Let's take it off. Let's see if I can sharpen this up a little bit. Yeah, right there looks a little better. Uh, that's manual focus. Let's let's leave it there for now. Um, that ring straight uh, shape structure again is sinus iridium. The mountain range that rings out is called the Jura Mountains. On the right hand side we have a feature which is called, and I actually have my lunar lunar map up on my other computer, um, and the pointed feature uh, on that U-shaped uh, crescent is uh, uh, actually uh, Herculides. Uh, Promontory Herculides. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Let me get back here. Um, and the left-hand part of that U-shaped circle is another promontory, and I'll get you the name of that. That, that is Promontory Laplace up on the uh, other left-hand corner. Uh, there's something very interesting. Let, let's zoom in a little bit closer here, and I want to show you something that... Um, Historically, it was pretty interesting. I'm putting promontory Herculeum um, in the right near the center of the screen, and I'm going to try to zoom up as far as I can zoom with this eyepiece. By the way, I'm using a 6.5 millimeter eyepiece. My five-inch uh, um, uh, Cassegrain. Um, uh, not the Schmidt Cassegrain, the uh, Maxudoff Cassegrain uh, F15 uh, with a uh, 6.5 millimeter eyepiece, which gives us 230 power before I do any zooming. And then, of course, we zoom and we get more. Now, look at that pointed feature and tell me, does it not look like a lady's head? Um, 
some of our early uh, lunar observers back in the 1800s making hand-drawn maps uh, drew some very, very interesting uh, drawings of that feature. And some actually went uh, a little more to the artist side of it. And the left side of that structure, you can see it looks somewhat like a face. The bottom part looks like a chin sticking out with a mo nose about halfway up. And, and look to the right and lower right of it, and it looks like um, there's a cast of a yellowish hair flowing back. And they used to see that as a woman's head. Uh, let me see if I can um, play with the color a little bit. Um, see if we can get a little more color. Where's my color setting at? Uh, i got to get in here and uh, get my settings to come up, and for some reason they don't want to pop up for me right now. Why won't they do that? Advanced settings should pop up. And they are not doing it. Why not? Um, let me try it this way. I go back here. Web options. Advanced settings. There we go. That should do it. No, it's not letting me. Let's uh, zoom this back. I don't know why that is. Um, it was letting me in there before. I'm hitting the uh, advanced setting. And for some reason, it's not going to advanced settings, and I don't know why. Let me pop back on autofocus, then try going to advanced settings. And it doesn't want to do it. Now, I'm running two computers off my car battery on a splitter. Now, whether that's got something to do with it, I don't know, because I've never done that before. Um, but for some odd reason, it's not letting me get into my color balance. And I do not know why. All right, well, we won't worry about that for now. We'll try to get back to that a little bit later. Uh, as you can see, I'm trying to um, jump things around here and see why. Uh, for some reason, it's not letting me do automatic settings. I mean, uh, advanced settings. That is strange. Okay, well, let's forget about that for a little bit. Um, we can zoom along here um, and... At this phase of the moon, there's one of my favorite areas, again, is coming into view, but we're a day short from where we were last month. Um, uh, I'm going to come over here, and we're going to go up, and let me get up here a little farther. Okay, here is Aristarchus, uh, the crater Aristarchus, and it is right on, let me take autofocus off again. I just don't like the way that autofocus is working. Um, and try to sharpen it up there. That's a little sharper there. Let's leave it there. Um, you can see Schroeder's Valley, which is down below, is in shadow and not visible, but that bright crater is Aristarchus. The um, uh, point I want to make about that and uh, another site that used one of my videos that I want to make a point on later, we'll get back to it. Hopefully, hopefully I'll remember to do that. But let's, uh, let's drop the zoom down a little bit and scoot along um, uh, get a little wider view and we'll scoot up along this terminator there okay there is our crater uh, Morius and in that shadowed area just below it is that dimpled uh, area which we call the Morius Hills and you can actually see some of it to the left of that crater. Um, that, that's those syndicones, uh, which so, show so prominently behind Morius uh, in, in that shadow area. Um, by the way, I'm wondering how uh, any of you that ha saw it uh, enjoyed that uh, slideshow that I put up of, of my CCD work. Um, as I've told you in the past, I'm a... 71 year old computer novice if you would want to. I mean I've been fooling around with computers for quite a few years in astronomy but I'm not the greatest at it it took me a little while to figure out how to actually put that slideshow together and put it up on YouTube but I um, uh, I spent a morning putting some of my um, uh, CCD images in a file and then I went in and uh, uh, put a description a word description um, of each image on the bottom as the there was no uh, audio on that video um, it, was, it came out to be about five minutes long, I think, and it just shows uh, some of the work that I do um, uh, with my CCD camera. Uh, there is our favorite crater, uh, Cassendi, um, 
and I can give you the name. If my voice trails off, it's because I'm working over here on my computer um, that um, gives me my map. Um, and there is a little crater. See it over at 9 o'clock sticking off of Cassendi? Um, that crater is actually Cassendi A. Um, they have a habit of um, naming smaller craters around a major feature like that by A, B, C, D, like that as the craters get smaller. Uh, that's the um, crater that has that um, uh, little uh, rise. Notice that just at about uh, the 5.30 near 6 o'clock position on Cassendi. Uh, and I remember Bill Bryson talking about that quite a bit. He used to think that was an artificial structure. Um, I don't agree. Uh, that's not my taking on it. But uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting feature. It looks like some type of a ridge. And we can zoom in on that a little better. Let's uh, zoom in. Um, now you can see um, um, it's definitely a ridge of some type. Um, very odd structure. Why it's there, I don't know. But I definitely do not think it's artificial. Um, a nice view of Cassandi. Um, let's drop back down again a little bit so we can zoom uh, around these areas of the moon uh, and get a little wider view so I know where I am. Uh, we're heading uh, to the southern area. Uh, there is that crater that is fairly well buried um, right about mid-screen. Um, that uh, is... Uh, uh, it's in Mare Humorum, right on the edge, and it looks like half the crater is underwater and half the, it is sticking up. Uh, that is the crater Doplemeyer, uh, and that is actually caused by a lava flow. When the uh, large impactor hit that, the area of the moon caused the Mare Humorum to form, and it caused a, uh, a lava flow. Uh, and Doplemeyer, obviously, was there before the impact, and it got... Just like water in a lake rising, uh, the lava flowed in there and um, hardened up and uh, covered up part of that crater. Uh, pretty interesting feature. Um, okay, we'll move on along the uh, terminator here. Going the wrong way here. Uh, going up and again towards the southern southern part of the moon. Now that double, see that double crater looks almost double, just below center. Um, that is, uh, I believe, let me just double check. Um, let me check here. That is, uh, yeah, that's Schiller. Uh, that's the crater Schiller. Notice uh, that is definitely two craters. If we zoom in on that, you can see there's a, a, a central peak feature in the lower section of it. That looks like that formed at a different time. And then uh, the other section of the crater, let's see if we can bring that up a little bit. Is, see, it's very, it's flat floored. So they look like two separate features. Uh, uh, and it looks like the wall between them was uh, taken out when the second impactor came in and uh, took that uh, wall out between those two craters. And let's go up. I know Clavius is out tonight, and that's a very, very, of course, well known. And uh, there's Tycho over near nine o'clock, um, high sun angle, so it's not as clear. And there is Clavius, dead center. Okay, now this is a very, very prominent crater, but notice. Uh, you can see it is that large, large crater, and it's got uh, one, two three, four, at least five impact craters, and there's many, many smaller ones in there. Um, but, but the sun angle's so high that we don't have a, a, a big relief where it shows a lot of the mountain uh, uh, and uh, hills and valleys and all that really, really well because there's no shadow there. Um, that brings up a point, uh, again, that I want to touch on. And i got to watch my time because I want to try to keep this video a little bit on the shorter side tonight, around 20 minutes if I can. And I see I'm already 14 minutes in, <clears throat> as usual. It just seems to go faster. Um, I'm coming along here. I'm looking for an area, and I'm not sure it's going to show up that well. Um, I, uh, I believe it was called Lassell's Bright Spot. Uh, 
Uh, you know what I need to do? Is I actually need to back out so we can see a larger portion of the moon. Um, let's see. There we go. Okay, now, uh, that's a little too, that's all the way out. I don't want to go that far. Let's bring it back a little bit. All right, that's a little better. Now let's zoom around and see if I can find that spot. Let me see. I need to get my bearings, so I need to get to the uh, edge of the moon first. I need to get to the, the southern southern highlands area. There it is. Okay, and I think I see the spot I'm talking about. Notice that very bright, bright spot uh, inside um, uh, inside that partially destroyed crater right almost dead center now um, let me see it's just to the uh, uh, upper left of the crater Tycho and let me see if I can locate on this on this map here um, yeah let's see that looks like I want to make sure I've got the right area um, that's Tycho. Yeah, there's Tycho. And it's hard to map these now because the sun angle's so high here. I'm losing the, the structure of these craters. Um, they don't stand out as well as they do when they're near the Terminator. We, it's like sunrise when the sun's rising on your house and it throws a long, long shadow. Um, and at this point, it's almost like noon and there's almost no shadow. So uh, we want to enlarge that. There we go. Now the bright spot is center. See it? Um, now I'm trying to figure out which crater that is in. Uh, this is a little bit distorted view. Okay, I think I see it. Yeah, okay. My map is actually tilted the other way. Um, that is actually in an area called um, Desklanders. Um, I believe one of the Apollo missions went to that area. But that bright spot was noticed uh, back in the 1800s, and I believe if this old mind of mine can recall some of these facts that I used to have much, much better when I was a youngster, when I used to do a lot of lunar work, when I was uh, just getting started with astronomy, um, I believe that's called Lassell's a bright spot. Lassell's a famous uh, astronomer from the... Uh, um, I forget the period. It was either late 1700s. I think it was in the late 1700s, basically, um, or, or early 18 at the latest. But anyway, he, he built some uh, really modern-looking telescopes for the day, um, and this bright spot was named. He discovered it, actually pointed it out, and um, I believe it was last, so I could be mistaken on that. Like I say, this is one of those old-time facts that uh, goes way back into the cobwebs of my mind. <laughs> I'm not sure I've got the right name, but... Uh, it's a very interesting. Um, it's kind of almost reminiscent of the uh, the bright uh, spots on the uh, asteroid series that the um, Dawn spacecraft has been sending images back. Um, and by the way, uh, if you remember my last Moonscape where we worked on the moon uh, and we talked about the news media and how they lose interest, I don't know if you've noticed, but a few uh, over the last week or so, uh, NASA has released some fantastic high-definition images of, the, of Pluto and its moon Charon. Um, and again, if you didn't see it, it's probably because our news media did, didn't get enough coverage on it, so you, you would see it. Um, and they're just mind-boggling beautiful. And to think that they're, that they're out there at the planet Pluto, uh, it's just really, really amazing. Um, I wanted to touch on one one thing. Um, oh, here, well, I just got uh, something popped up here. Maybe this is where I can get to my color settings. Yeah, finally, it's about time. Let's uh, boost my color intensity up a little bit. Uh, okay, now let's go back. Let's go back um, to... Um, Sinus iridium area. And there's the bluish. See that bluish, nice bluishness in the uh, uh, the mare. Uh, that's Bolidolis, Cassendi. That bluish looking tinge to the uh, Mar areas there. It's real, really neat. And as we get down here to sinus, sinus iridium, uh, if I can get this thing to go the right way. Um, there's Kepler. Look at that. That I I love that that splash pattern uh, 
from Kepler as one of the prettiest ray systems on the moon. And there's our Aristarchus, that brilliant white crater indicating a very young impact. And we're going to go over to the Sinus Iridium area. And there it is. And you can see there um, the coloration. Notice right in, right across the sea, there's kind of a yellowish brown look to it. And then up above that, there's more of a bluish color. So there is definitely, a, the camera is showing us a, um, a color variation there. So that is pretty neat. Um, and I, yes, I do believe some of that color is real, and we are really intensifying it. Because when you look at it visually, you don't see that color. There's not a col enough color there for the human eye to see that ki some kind of color in the telescope. Uh, it's taken this camera that really enhances color, and that's actually exaggerating it. Let's let's be honest here, um, but it is real. And but the thing you've got to be careful about is boosting the color up too high. Uh, then you start to get a false uh, coloration. Um, I want to mention one thing about uh, last time we talked about some sites that weren't very honest, and um, I want to mention something that uh, I did that I really wish I hadn't done now. Um, and, I, and I'm going to keep to my um, uh, way of doing things and not mention any sites by name. I don't want to call anybody out. Everybody's entitled to their own views. I, I have my views. These sites have their own. Uh, but I was asked by uh, this one site to uh, allow him to use a video to, that uh, shows what he calls a lunar wave. Um, it shows up on one of my videos. Uh, I believe it was... Uh, uh, using the 10-inch telescope for the first time or something like that. It was one of my earlier videos, and uh, I said, yes, go ahead, you can use it, but please don't say that I'm using it and backing your theory on the lunar wave. Just You, you have my permission to show it, but um, don't say that I back your position. Well, he was nice enough. He put it up, and he, he didn't say that I backed his theory, but he also did not make the point that I did not back his theory, which I really wish he would have. I wish he'd said that, that I allowed him to use the video, but I do not agree with his assessment of what that wave line going up the video is. I actually think it's electronic. I do not think it's anything natural. And he thinks he's entitled to his views. He thinks it's the, he calls the moon a hologram at some time. And uh, he uses proof right here at the center of the screen. We're looking at the crater Aristarchus. And he, in one of his videos, points out all the nice detail, detail that we're looking at now, the, the Herodotus Mountains that are right nearby, um, um, and the actual valley, Schroeder's Valley, which comes out of shadow. By tomorrow night, it'll be out in the crater itself. Well, he says that the, he, he observed this area on a night like this and saw all this nice detail. Um, and then when the moon was full and it was going into eclipse, he says, well, I should be able to see the same detail when the shadow of the eclipse gets to Aristarchus, and all that detail should be visible again. And right there, he's showing um, his uh, knowledge is, is limited in astronomy. Now, I've been in astronomy, as I said, <coughs> it's coming up on 60 years. Um, uh, God willing, if I'm still here next September the 8th in 2016, That'll be the anniversary of my first real night as an amateur astronomer when I observed uh, the planet Mars with a good friend uh, who was in high school and I was in like seventh grade at the time. Um, September 8th, 1956, 60 years ago. And um, so I think I have a fair knowledge of astronomy. I'm not a professional, I'm still an amateur. Um, he made the point that, um, that when the shadow of the eclipse got there that he should be able to see this type of detail. Well, that, obviously that's not true because um, during uh, eclipse of the moon, the moon is full, the sun is directly overhead, you have no shadows, and all an eclipse of the moon is is a shadow of the earth going over each feature on the moon until the moon is completely covered. It's like you putting your hand up in front of your, over your eyes, shading your eyes. Uh, just because of the, the, the shadow of an eclipse gets to this area, it's not going to bring this detail out like we're looking at tonight. We're looking at detail tonight because the this area of the moon is on the terminator. It's at sunrise where you have very, very long shadows. Well, that doesn't happen at full moon, and no eclipse shadow was going to bring that detail out like this. So the point he makes there is completely wrong. Um, 
the other thing is those waves that he sees going up these screens. Now, he gets into a little bit about angles. Um, uh, if you look at the chip, uh, now, now the camera I'm using is a Logitech C910, and, and the chip is rectangular. And when I set mine up, I try to um, set the, the long rectangle east and west and a short, shorter rectangle uh, north and south. Now, if you if you put the camera in there, and you, you're only lining it up by eye, okay. So now, if you have a good and square, that line will kind of right go right up through the middle, nice and square, like kind of does on my video. Now, but if you put your camera in there and it's tilted a few degrees, it's going to change the angle of that line, which he tries to point out in some videos that it's changed. All that is is it's. I believe electronic noise and you've turned the camera a little bit it's not perfectly aligned with the axis of the telescope so you get the several degrees 10 degrees or whatever the number of degrees your your angle is off from the axis of the telescope um, so I disagree with him there and he also claims that uh, you can see the wave uh, ends at the edge of the moon and I also disagree with that assessment because uh, I think what's happening there is uh, you have a lot, a lot of detail and contrast on the moon, but the, that little disturbing wave that runs up the screen, uh, when it runs off the moon, it's running off into a completely black sky where there's no contrast at all, so I, I just don't think you're seeing it there. Um, I think it's strictly it's some kind of electronic um, um, interference uh, that these cameras are have uh, as they're taking these images you got to remember we're shooting at about 30 frames per second um, I you know I can't explain what it is uh, but it's certainly not something on the moon and the moon is certainly not a hologram um, he but he's entitled to his impidin and I just wanted to make the point that I, I really wish when he had used my video that he made the point that I was allowing him to use it but I do not subscribe to his theory because by him using my video and actually putting my name on the screen uh, and not saying anything else it's kind of like I'm backing this theory and I do not so that's just a point that I wanted to make tonight um, about that um, and here we are 27 minutes in as usual and I actually want to finish up a little bit early tonight and I want to stick another camera and take some high resolution imagery um, that I can actually process in Registax uh, and I'm going to do that in a few minutes we're going to take another short little tour around and I notice I'm getting up near a half an hour already which I didn't want to do tonight but of course you know me I get blabbering on and um, I kind of uh, lose track of time let's just go look at some of the uh, Mar areas look look at that coloration uh, nice you see it's almost uh, an orangey brown yellowish brown I don't know somewhere in between there and then the bluer I've, I've got it jacked up a little bit so it might be a, a little over the top in the color but uh, it does make it very interesting let's go look at our uh, split between mirror uh, tranquilitatis and uh, 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 mare uh, and I'm losing my mind here um, let me uh, uh, let's see I've got to get over here uh, this should be mirror no, it's not going to give me the number. Uh, huh. No, 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 no. There, Serenitatis, that's it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you can actually really see that color uh, difference. The lower one is uh, definitely a yellowish brown, and the top is that beautiful, beautiful blue. Um, so, there is some real nice color. Uh, again, I, I've boosted it up a little more than I usually do, more than I'd like to, because uh, we are probably exaggerating it a little bit. There's our friend, um, um, that splash crater over by Mare Chrism, um, with that very sh sh uh, sharp angled impact with a spray pattern out uh, to the sides and none to one side. Uh, Mare Chrism itself. And we'll go up along the edge here. Um, and there's those two really bright spots. It's I've tried to pin those the craters 
uh, in earlier phases of the moon, but it's really pretty tough. I have yet really, really to look at that carefully and figure those out. They're very interesting at this phase of the moon. But you can see um, you have very little detail until you get over here when we start to get near the, what well, is the Terminator, the sunrise, sunset line of the moon. And there's where all the shadows and sharp shadows are, and that's where all the nice detail is. Um, bringing this down, uh, look at Tycho. There's Tycho, and there's that nice ray, that double ray that, that, that splashed out and out over the, the, the Mar floor. Uh, that's really, really, really neat. Um, okay, guys, uh, I'm going to start thinking about winding this up. Again, I apologize, but it just looks like the weather is not going to cooperate for that lunar eclipse coming Sunday night here in Connecticut. Like I said, we've had a stretch of unbelievable weather. Um, it's been um, clear, pleasant, um, but that area of moisture has been lurking just to our south. Um, and um, it uh, looks like it's going to move in, at least the high clouds from it, on Sunday and Sunday night. And so I'm probably not going to be able to image that. I'm trying to get my uh, zoom to work. I've, uh, my function is, oh, there we go, now it's working again. I wanted to zoom in on uh, Tycho and get a little closer look at that uh, as we finish up. You can still see, even though there's not much sun angle there you can still see that's a very prominent crater um, very prominent central peak and way back when when i first started we talked about central peaks now they formed maybe we'll do that again as a refresher uh, maybe there's some new people that haven't checked out some of my early or early videos when i talk about that then we'll probably maybe we'll try that again in the future so anyway guys uh, i'm going to end this now um as i say uh, I wanted to get, at least get this video up because uh, I'm 99% sure now that I'm not going to be able to do that eclipse um, strictly because the weather looks like it's not going to cooperate here in Connecticut. It looks like we're going to get the clouds from that storm system that move up on a Sunday and Sunday night into Monday right at the time of the eclipse. If for some reason it's wrong and it is clear, there is a slight chance that I may be able to do it. but. Um, uh, right now, the odds are not in our favor. Um, I will be gone for uh, uh, about a half a month. I'll be down visiting my son in Florida and enjoying myself for a little bit. So I'll be off uh, for a little while. And when I come back, I have uh, a lot of CCD work I want to do. I want to do a mosaic of the uh, Andromeda galaxy. Those Andromeda, those uh, CCD images you, you saw in that slideshow in my last video, uh, remember, those images take anywhere from an hour to three or four hours to take each image because uh, you gather uh, all the light and, and the, there are separate channels, red, green, blue, and then one white light channel we call luminous, which builds up the background real strong. So by the time you image all this, um, and depending on the brightness of the object, you're working anywhere from an hour, hour and a half, up to uh, three, four, and sometimes even five hours. Uh, so there are a lot of work, and, but I enjoy doing those, and uh, I'm going to be doing quite a bit of that come this fall. But I will also try to stick in some, a few more of these uh, lunar videos. So, folks, I'm going to say uh, adieu for tonight. Um, like I guess I'll be off Monday morning to head down to Florida to visit my son. He lived nearby for years, and his job took him away about five years ago. And my wife and I are going to go down and just enjoy ourselves for a couple of weeks. Um, these old bones of mine can take the break, I guess. Um, but anyway, it's been great with you tonight again. Um, I wish you all good health, uh, clear skies. Uh, get out there if you got a scope. Get out there and enjoy the night sky. That's all I can say. Um, every night it's clear, the show is free. It doesn't cost you anything but a little bit of energy to get out there and enjoy it. So, guys, get out there, enjoy the night sky, and we'll see you real soon. Take care now.